morning, everyone. Kind of weird having you in my house here, but it's kind of cool to have you over also. Anyway, welcome to our first video lesson. Thank you very much for participating in the discussion board. Your questions were great. Um, I have the discussion board set up right here. I'm gonna roll through some of the questions and some of your theories and uh, we'll see how it goes. This is my first one. So the first question comes from Haley Clark. What do you think that the bird and its death symbolized? And several of you had pretty good theories on this. Cody asked, do you guys think Minnie's dead bird shows how Mr. Wright was abusive to his wife? The bird was all Minnie really had, and once Mr. Wright killed it, that set her over the edge. And uh, some of you may spotted Bella had an interesting theory that in fact, maybe Minnie snapped and killed the bird herself. The bird could have been something to remind herself of what Mr. Wright was putting her through. So interesting theory, Bella, uh, good thinking there. The bird, it's important to know how the bird was killed. Its neck was wrung. And the bird, that of course is very symbolic. The bird is symbolic of Mrs. Wright, uh, who was called Minnie Foster before she became Mrs. Wright. And what was she known for? Singing in the church choir. So she would have been singing like the bird. So it's pretty safe bet the bird symbolizes her. And the bird, as someone noted, would have been the one piece of life in the house. We know her husband was pretty cold. Uh, one piece of life in the house. And there, people did have birds in their houses at this time. It's not unusual. They were actually traveling bird salespeople. So it fits with the time period. And she would have been her, her little bird. She had no children. Uh, not many people visited her. We'll get more into that a little bit later. But uh, it's pretty, it's strongly implied that Mr. Wright uh, snapped the bird's neck. Um, and it does, I think, as someone said here, uh, symbolize it. Either the physical abuse, maybe, of, of Mrs., uh, Mrs. Wright, but certainly the mental abuse uh, that he probably inflicted on her. So the bird is also, and some of you picked up on this, the bird is also the key piece of evidence in the murder because it would give her, for you criminal justice majors, it would give the prosecutor motive, the motive for the murder. He killed the bird. She kills him. And when the two women, Mrs. Peters and Mrs. Hale, find it in the sewing box, they know that. And that's why they hide it. So the bird, good place to start. Very important symbol in the play. So a lot of you did ask about um, the, uh, the, whether she was abused by Mr. Wright. We don't have any evidence that she was physically abused, but we can figure something out by um, what's said about him. Now, why was Mr. Hale stopping by to see Mr. Wright? Exactly, to talk about getting a phone, because now everybody walks around with their own phone, but people used to have a party line. Three, maybe four neighbors would get together and they would each have a phone in their house, but they would all be on the same line. So you had to get your neighbors to go in on it to get a phone. And Mr. Wright's response was, no, people talk too much as it is. And of course, Mrs. Hale, who, important distinction, Mrs. Hale knew Mrs. Wright since she was young. And he, she says that Mr. Wright was just too cold to just to pass the day and she shivers and he's one of the reasons that she didn't visit which makes her feel guilty and we'll, we'll uh, loop back to that as well so was he abusive to her probably we don't have any specific evidence of physical abuse but he certainly seems like someone who would be mentally abusive which is as bad in a lot of ways now, a lot of you brought up the difference between men and women in this play, and that's extremely important. Right at the beginning, 
right at the beginning, the county attorney, similar to district attorney today, prosecutes crimes, comes in and he says to the ladies by the fire, this feels good. Come up to the fire, ladies. And they go, no thanks, and they step back. There's almost something devilish about his invitation. And these men, they have a little different take on Mr. Wright than Mrs. Hale did. Uh, the men said, oh, he was a good guy. Honest enough, kept his word. Different set of values. One, men, men value one thing, women value the other. And of course, the men in this play, safe to say, they really do not distinguish themselves as being uh, good guys. Um, it's pretty clear to see uh, the way they mock Mrs. Wright for worrying about her preserves. Uh, they think she had it so good there because she had the latest kitchen towel roller. Um, they're very disrespectful and mocking to the ladies. In fact, the title of the play, Trifles, at the end, the women are paying attention to the trifles, a dead bird, a crooked knot, uh, in Mrs. Wright's sewing. And that, of course, is the clue. Uh, if the men had paid more attention to trifles, then maybe they would have done a lot better. I think the camera makes me look fat. All right, we're back. So, uh, to go from the bird to Mrs. Peters and Mrs. Hale, we'll go back to Carly's excellent question. Why does Mrs. Peters, why do Mrs. Peters and Mrs. Hale suddenly hide the dead bird from their husbands when they hear them coming in the room? The always ever suspicious Emily Stone. Yeah, I thought that was sketchy. Maybe one of them was in on the murder. They act standoffish the whole time, at least from my point of view. Emily goes on to say, I think Mrs. Hale and Mrs. Peters are too quick to point fingers to blame Mr. Wright. I wouldn't be surprised if it was secretly one of them. Or they knew who did it. Although Mrs. Peters is married to the sheriff, could that make it harder or easier to cover up a murder? Well, I think it makes it harder. That's a good question. It makes it harder for her to participate in the cover-up. And also, she is new to town. She never knew Mrs. Wright as Minnie Foster. She has no background, so it's so important. We'll get to this in a minute. Mrs. Hale has to draw her into her plan and sort of influence her to come to the conclusion that they should hide the evidence. Uh, no, I don't think Mrs. Peters has anything to hide. All right, so we're, we're starting to get into the central question of the play. Why do these two women cover up evidence in a murder, right? The bird is the motive for the murder. And if the county attorney and the sheriff find that, they've got their case, they're good to go. Because after all, you have to remember the time period. Who would have been on the jury if she went to court? All men, that's right, all men. Male judge, male lawyers, and all male jury. And how do you think they're gonna feel about a woman accused of killing her husband? If she gets away with it, they might be next. So, that's a very important key element here. This is a play is maybe, what, 100 years old? Very, very different time for women than it is now. So, would have been an all-male jury. In fact, uh, there's a short story version of this play uh, called A Jury of Her Peers. And that's exactly what she gets here. And that, of course, is taken right from the um, Constitution, I believe the Bill of Rights, you can look that up, um, that she, every person is entitled to a jury of his peers. In this case, it's a her, and she would not have gotten one in court, but she does get one with Mrs. Hale and Mrs. Peters. So, why does Mrs. Hale cover up? Okay, there are a couple reasons Mrs. Hale decides to cover up. 
Uh, number one, we already covered. Um, she knew how cold and unpleasant Mr. Wright was and possibly abusive. And she knew the effect that Mrs. Minnie Foster marrying him had on Minnie Foster. Uh, she no longer sang in the choir. She's not even a member of the Ladies Aid. Um, her life was pretty much shut down. She lives in a hollow. This is not like a hollowed out tree, though that would be cool. This is sort of if you go down a hill, you're in the hollow, and then up a hill. And they are always a few degrees colder, and they are kind of spooky places, believe me. So Mrs. Hale knows how Mrs. Wright was living, and she also feels a little guilty. But I tell you what I do wish, Mrs. Peters. I wish I had come over sometimes when she was here. I, I wish I had. So Mrs. Hale was a little bit of a fair weather friend. Um, she knows that she could have come over and been more supportive um, of Mrs. Wright, but she didn't. Um, she probably went and hung out with her friends who were happily married and the house was warm and cozy uh, with the people in it, but she didn't. So Mrs. Hale, you getting this down? This is important. Mrs. Hale hides the evidence in the murder because A, she knew the effect, she knew the at least mental abuse that Mr. Wright inflicted on her. She knew that um, Mrs. Wright did not sing in the choir, was not in the ladies' aid. She feels guilty for not coming over and being a friend to support her. Maybe she would not have killed her husband uh, if she had had a friend to talk to. But Mrs. Peters doesn't, doesn't have any of that. She doesn't have any guilt about it. She just met the woman in the jail for the first time. What is it that gets Mrs. Peters on board with the plan to cover up? Well, Mrs. Peters gives us some clues there. Mrs. Peters knows what loneliness is. So she identifies with Mrs. Wright. And when you identify with someone, you're much more sympathetic with them. When you know how someone feels, maybe you look like them, you've had similar experiences, you're much more sympathetic to them. Sadly, if someone's very different from you, different looking, different background, you are less, generally less sympathetic toward them. That's not a good thing, but it's a natural human instinct. And Mrs. Peters talks about living in the Dakotas. Remember, this is a story of the Midwest and how cold it was and how lonely it was. And maybe most importantly, um, this scene uh, when Mrs. Hale's working on Mrs. Peters. Mrs. Hale says, she liked the bird. She was going to bury it in that pretty box, Mrs. Peters in a whisper. When I was a girl, my kitten, there was a boy, I took a hatchet, and before my eyes, before I could get there, if they hadn't held me back, I would have, and of course she wants to say, kill him. But what she does say is, hurt him. So right there, she's feeling what Mrs. Wright felt when her pet was killed. So Mrs. Peters identifies with her. She knows what lonely is. A boy killed her kitten uh, when she was little. So they each have two very good reasons to cover up the evidence on their own. And of course, together, the men in the story are certainly, to say the least, condescending and unpleasant toward them. Um, and they are well aware uh, of that.